And if we were to read carefully what those messengers came with in terms of revelation, we would find that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left us with two main things. And he says, I've left you with two things for as long as you hold fast upon them, you will never be led astray. That is the Quran and my Sunnah which means the traditions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his life, his life uh, and his teachings. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recited for us the verses that were revealed to him by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. If we look at Surah Al-Baqarah, there is something that Allah says to us. When you're young, you may not understand it, but as you grow older, you begin to understand the plan of Allah. As you apply your mind and you realize why exactly you are on earth, it is precisely what Allah says. So in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, We will definitely test every single one of you. So I'm on earth here. One of the reasons is to be tested. Subhanallah. Like I would go to school to be tested so that when I pass the exam, I move on to the next level where the test will be even harder, but the qualification will be greater. So this is why the Prophet Muhammad says, in Allah, when Allah loves his worshiper, he tests him so that he can actually graduate to a new level and the certificate he gets at the end or the book that he receives will be filled with a very, very high qualification. Look at Ibrahim alayhi salam, the Prophet Abraham, may peace be upon him. He was tested one after the other. Look at the Prophet Ayyub or Job, may peace be upon him. Allah says, we tested him. We tested him so much and we found him to be patient. We found him to be very patient. What a great worshiper of ours. He was oft returning to us in repentance, in gratitude, in praise and in every other way. So Allah praised Ayyub alayhi salam. So Allah says, I will test every one of you. So I know that one of the reasons why I'm on earth is to be tested. I will face challenges, difficulties, hardship. In fact, in Surah Al-Ankabut, Allah says, that is how he distinguishes the believers from those who are liars, those who don't really believe. Right at the beginning, he says, does man think that it will be sufficient for him to say that I believe? And then he is not tested. Indeed, we have tested all those before you. In other words, we will test you as well. Just like we tested all those before you in order to distinguish those who are truthful from those who are liars. May Allah make us from among those who are truthful and may he never test us, us with tests that will be too difficult for us to pass. Amin. So let's go back to the verse, Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah says, Indeed, we will test every single one of you. We spoke about that already. With what? What will he test us with? What do I need to expect? So before I continue, in life we get attached to things and we don't realize when we came into this world, we were alone. Prior to coming into this world, we were where Allah wanted us. But we came alone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when we go, we will go alone. And we will meet Allah alone. And we will answer to our questions or accountability will happen alone. وَلَقَدْ جِئْتُمُونَا فُرَادَا كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً وَتَرَكْتُمْ 
مما خولناكم وراء ظهوركم on that day allah will say and you have come to us just like we have created you alone you came to us alone just like when we created you you were alone subhanallah and then allah says you left behind everything that gave you company on earth what gave you company on earth your family members your wealth the good things that you considered good on earth all that was with you the stuff you owned, the property, subhanallah. Allah says, all of that, where is it? It's not there. You've just come yourself. And guess what? Your deeds. So do good deeds. You need to earn points. You need to earn marks in this world. How do I earn marks? Well, when I pass the challenges, the tests that Allah has placed in my path, I need to fulfill obligations and stay away from prohibitions. And I need to know that the things that I will become acquainted with and attached to, at some point, Allah will detach me from them. For as long as they are material items of this world, things that are very, very connected to this world and this world alone. So Allah says, we will test you with what? Now I'll explain. The first two things he says, I'll test you with a little bit of fear, uncertainty, anxiety, and some hunger. So don't get too attached to things. The comfort zone you're in, we will take you out of it at some point. Subhanallah. For what? In order to test you. It's the same verse. So when we get too attached to this comfort zone we're in, the day Allah decides to take us out of it as He has promised, it will be extremely difficult. But if we were not too attached and we expected that we have this comfort thanks to Allah, but He may take it away, we will still thank Allah. Then we understood the plan of Allah. It creates a cushion around us such that the day it is snatched away and we are taken out of that comfort zone, we still have firm conviction. We expected it. And you know what? The blow was cushioned. It was softened. Subhanallah. So a little bit of anxiety. It's normal. It's human. Some sadness. Subhanallah. Allah will remove you from your comfort zone. Uncertainty. Fear. Khawf means a little bit of fear. And I've explained fear from different aspects. Allah says, yes, that safety. You become too comfortable. Allah says, we will test it and shake it until you realize that we are the only ones who can provide you true safety, true comfort, true contentment. That's Allah and Allah alone. So in my life and in yours, as you grow older, so many things will happen that will throw you out of your comfort zone. You will sense a little bit of fear, anxiety, sometimes uncertainty. Allah says, until you're, you are convinced that Allah alone is in charge and in control. The sooner that happens, the easier it becomes to navigate through the difficult time.